All right, so we're back and uh, working on the 395 rebuild. It's time to, you see I got everything pretty much cleaned up. I'll be ready to put this together fairly soon. I'm assuming that the biggest hiccup to this whole project in terms of timing is going to be getting the parts I have on order. Otherwise, so far I have about 12 hours into the project since I first started cracking the cover off and removing the first bolts. So today, a little project while we're waiting for bearings and other parts to arrive is going to be to heat up this crankcase right around the bearing pocket so that we can punch that pocket out using a socket and a hammer. All right, so before we start, let's just See where we're at, 65 degrees. One twenty one. Long ways to go. So, I'll probably do a lot of this off camera here, but I uh, just want to show you the general process. Mm, probably about a five minute job per bearing with a decent heat gun. If you have a smaller battery operated heat gun, you know, it might take you a good 10 minutes per bearing, and then you may have a hard time even getting it up to full temperature. 200 degrees minimum, but ideally you want it between 250 and 300, so that you aren't going to risk doing any damage to the surfaces of the bearing pocket. Obviously you want to use a good welding glove, or in this case I'm using a Black Knight rubber glove, which is uh, very heat resistant. You can douse these in really hot boiling water and not have any issues. So we're just going to keep this concentrated. You don't need to heat up the whole crankcase. If you want, you can put the crankcase in the oven and get it up to 250 or 300. This makes it a little more convenient and easier to handle by doing it this way. And as long as you have a powerful enough heat gun, uh, you can get this done actually pretty quickly. If you start smelling, a little bit of smoke or oil that's burning coming from the heat uh, or coming from the bearings in the crankcase then you know you've got the crankcase at about the right temperature so if you don't have an actual heat gun in the case mine here is saying 270 right now that's just what's coming right out the nozzle like that that's the temperature of the actual crankcase but we'll check that here in just a second Long ways to go, we're only at 148.
got. We're about actually seven minutes in, so this doesn't go even that much faster than a battery one, but uh, we're doing all right here. We're already over 200 with a battery heat gun. You kind of struggle to even get much over 200 degrees. So now that we're over 200, I would expect in very short order here, we'll be ready to knock this bearing out. Interesting. Actually went down in temperature. So I'm now adjusting my heat gun to crank out more, more heat. It gives me the temperature at the nozzle, but it doesn't have a laser to tell me what the heat of my target is. That would be a nice feature or something like this. So I'm cranking out about 500 to 600 degrees at the nozzle. Let's see what that little bit of time has just gotten us. Yeah, we're at 282 now, so we're ready to actually drop this sucker down. So let's see what we can do. It'll cool off quick, but not quick enough if you get it up that hot. You should just get appropriate size. See how easy? That was just one knock. That was just one knock, and I don't know if you can see in there, but uh, there was a. This is a dirty saw, but there's no scoring 90 degrees to the pocket, which is good. Um, not that that would be a huge issue, as long as you don't have big heavy scoring um, to loosen the bearing. But uh, so we got a good result there. Yeah, don't do what I just did there. Fortunately, I grabbed it just for a short period of time. Thought maybe it would cool off quicker, but uh, well, that's how you do it. So now we'll start working on the next one after this cools down. All right, so made just a little bit of an amateurish move there on that first half. I didn't check the temperature on my variable temperature heat gun, and I only had it set at 280. That's just at the nozzle, so that's why I couldn't get it very uh, warm. As soon as I cranked that up to around 500 degrees, and I was able to very quickly get it up to, um, well, 280, so plenty warm enough. You saw how easy that bearing came out. So we'll try this half, and uh, I may not, again, include this on the whole video, um, but I'll let you know what the time and temperatures were periodically here. And compared to my battery, um, heat gun which will still get the job done uh, basically I did go through a full battery and that's you know a six amp hour um, battery uh, just to pull out one bearing if I'm going to get it up to 250 degrees so these uh, corded uh, heat guns uh, that are rated to 500 to you know this one is 1200 degrees Fahrenheit it's definitely the way to go for speed All right, 
had a little bit of a problem getting the reach I needed. There you go. All right, let's see where we're at with those couple minutes. Wow, I can't believe it's that hot that quick. But maybe so. Goes to show how powerful these heat guns are if you have them set up right. Check it again on this side. 246. Two fifty-five. We'll give it just a another thirty seconds to a minute. See if we can get that on both sides up over two fifty. So yeah, with the right setup, you can get this done in five minutes per bearing. See what we got. 260, 280. Yeah, we're good. 240. And this should just tap out of here nicely. There we go. And. Doesn't look like we have any damage at all to the inside of that bearing pocket. So, pretty easy to do yourself. Well, that was four to five minutes on that bearing.